So thus far, there have been few standard systemic uh, second-line treatment options for patients with um, metastatic neuroendocrine tumors that progress on first-line somatostatin analog treatment. Yet, uh, in um, for over a decade, primarily in Europe, uh, thousands of patients have been treated with a novel form of therapy called peptide receptor radiotherapy, or otherwise known as somatostatin analog radiotherapy, which basically involves use of a radioactive isotope drug like either yttrium-90, which is a beta emitter, or lutetium-177, uh, which is a beta and gamma emitter, conjugated to a somatostatin analog like octreotide or octreotate, which allows targeted delivery of radiation directly to tumors that express somatostatin receptors. And we know that the large majority of differentiated neuroendocrine tumors express high levels of somatostatin receptors. Uh, the data from the uh, phase two studies has been very encouraging, median time to progression approaching, approaching three years in some uh, databases. That's long even by the standards of neuroendocrine tumors, which can be slow growing. And so the Netter one was the first phase three randomized study to really look rigorously at uh, the radio-labeled analog with the most favorable therapeutic index, lutetium-177 dotatate, uh, compared to high-dose octreotide in patients with mid-gut neuroendocrine tumors progressing on first-line uh, somatostatin analog therapy. So the primary endpoint on the Netter 1 study was progression-free survival, and the improvement in PFS on this study was you know, in my opinion, nothing short of dramatic. Uh, the hazard ratio for PFS was 0.21, in other words, an 80% improvement in progression-free survival compared to the control arm. Uh, the median progression-free survival on the high-dose octreotide arm was roughly eight months. Uh, it was not reached on the lutetian arm with uh, well over a year follow-up. Uh, it's estimated that uh, the median progression-free survival uh, when the final data is analyzed will probably be in the 40-month range which is extremely encouraging. There seems to be an overall survival benefit. The curve separated um, with a 0 0.018 uh, uh, statistical significance for improvement in overall survival on the study, which is quite unusual in neuroendocrine studies. It's important to emphasize this was an interim survival analysis, and so the threshold for significance was much lower, but certainly a very promising um, uh, result with a much higher death rate on the octreotide arm versus lutetium arm. And the response rates were much higher with lutetium. A response rate, overall response rate of 19% uh, versus only 3% on the octreotide arm. So this seems to be a very active drug in this population of patients.